Good day to Dr. Tan. Uh, today, we will be presenting a clinical trial for study protocol of intramyocardial injections of autologous bone marrow stem cells for refractory angina uh, in phase 2. Uh, today, I'm Melvin Teo and this is Ulrik Yang. Today, we will be your presenter. So, for this uh, uh, clinical trial phase 2, the brief summary is actually an interventional st uh, study type with a problem statement of large number of patients with refractory angina due to coronary disease despite the use of multiple angina, anti-angina medications remain severely symptomatic with disciplining angina. So in this hy study hypothesis, using infusion of photolocus mononuclear cell derived from the patient's own bone marrow, uh, derived uh, while intramyocardial injections, and delivered uh, while myocardial injection in the patients with refractory angina, normal or slightly depressed ventricular junk functions, promote improvement in anginal symptoms and myocardial perfusion by the introducing uh, new angiogenesis. New angiogenesis is actually the formation of new uh, blood vessels in terms of in the heart patients to uh, improve the symptoms of uh, refractory angina. So in this uh, clinical trial, there will be three procedures and one bio biological. Uh, in the three uh, procedures are uh, local sedation, bone marrow aspiration, mini thoracotomy, and autologous bone marrow mononuclear cells infusions. So I'll be going to brief introductions of refractory angina. Usually, uh, chronic symptomatic uh, coronary artery disease caused by reduced blood flow to the heart muscles, leading to chronic and intense ischemia. And it causes lifestyle limiting symptoms such as chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue, and nausea. And the ineffective or the conventional treatments such as myocardial, myocardial revascularization, angioplasty, or coronary artery bypass grafting uh, shows no uh, effective treatment of uh, refractory angina. Thus, the user's uh, bone marrow transplant to stimulate the angiogenesis to improve the symptoms. Then I'll be going through brief uh, introduction of bone marrow mon mononuclear cell transplantations. Uh, mononuclear cell fraction comprises of heterogeneous cell populations including hepatoid stem cells, uh, endothelial progenital cells, and mesenchyma stem cells, which uh, provide an easy, accessible, renewable, and autologous source uh, without any uh, extensive exit bone manipulation is required and the advantages of using uh, bone marrow mononuclear cell transplantation uh, exhibit a more favorable survival uh, pattern in the patients and uh, macrophages found in the, the uh, bone marrow transplants actually uh, contribute to improve of cardiac functions by accelerating vascularizations. Uh, other supporting clinical findings using infusion of flow of Autologous bone marrow mononuclear cells treating myocardial ischemic in stimulating angiogenesis. Uh, so the uh, three uh, different clinical trial uh, uh, clinical findings shows uh, the improvement of refractory uh, angina using uh, by stimulating angiogenesis. So uh, uh, Su and his colleagues found uh, shows patients with chronic ischemic heart disease had modest increase in exercise capacity and in left ventricular functions. Uh, Ramshad and also found the modest improvement noted in Canadian Cardiovascular Society class quality of life score and exercise capacity among treated chronic myocardial ischemic patients. Bigger and his colleague uh, found founding shows patients with refractory angina uh, with class 3 to 4 cardio a Canadian Cardiovascular Society had significant improvement in quality of life score and without any major cardiac events. So I'm going to talk about the mechanism of stem cells in neoangiogenesis. So you're using bone marrow stem cells. It helps to release angiogenetic factors, which helps in differentiating uh, differentiating into vascular li lineage. So the mesenchymal stem cell found in the bone marrow will secrete angiogenetic. Uh, paracrine factors such as vascular endothelial growth factor, basic fibroblastic growth factor, and platelet derived growth factors, and which helps to stimulate the new vessels formations. And now I will continue with the Canadian Cardiovascular Society Angina 
classification. There are four classes of uh, angina classification. Uh, for the first class, the angina only occur after a fast, prolonged, and strenuous effort or during a work or recreation. Well, for the second class, there are slight limitation to everyday activity, and will it it will have a considerable limitation of common physical activity and lastly when it reaches class 4 it will cause an inability to perform any physical activity without discomfort and the symptom can be present at rest. So there are uh, primary outcome and secondary outcome in this uh, clinical trial and for primary outcome the Angina class variation is evaluated based on the percentage of participants who has a change in angina classification class according to the classification that I mentioned just now after the treatment. Well, for the secondary outcome, ventricular ejection fractions and the myocardial ischemia are evaluated after the treatment. Now I will introduce about the criteria in this clinical study. So for the inclusion criteria, patients that have several characteristics such as below will be enrolled. First of all, uh, the patient need to conform with the coronary artery disease and conform with ischemia. Besides of that, uh, the patient uh, will usually have the class 4 angina paralysis. And besides of that, the patient with ejection fraction that greater than 45% and the microcardia perfusion skintometry that showing the area of microcardia ischemia supply variable tissue. And for the exclusion criteria, the patient that, will, that have several characteristics such as below will be excluded. First of all, is the significant valvular heart disease, patient with chronic kidney disease that required renal replacement therapy, patients that have several comorbidity associated with the reduction of life expectancy in less than five years, and lastly, the patient with ongoing abuse use of alcohol or illegal drugs will be excluded. So there are four arms in this clinical study with, with a local seduction, bone marrow aspiration, meaning thoracotomy and uh, bone marrow monoclonal cells infusions. Mono, uh, local seduction means it is a one-time injection of medicine that numb a small area of the body. Bone marrow aspiration is a procedure that involves taking a sample of a liquid part of the soft tissue inside our body. And mini thoracotomy is a procedure to access a segment of the left ventricle to be treated. Lastly, the monoclonal cell infusion is the injection of the cell preparation in directly into myocardium. And lastly, there are two adverse events in this uh, clinical study which are in inferior myocardial infractions and anterior my myocardial infractions. And both two of these adverse effects have resulted in two uh, participants to death. Uh, from among 13 participants. Now I will talk about the advantages and limitations of this cell therapy. For the advantages of the cell therapy, the patient shows improvement in myocardial perfusion after the cell delivery, and it can significantly improve the quality of life of the patient, and in return, in it improves the exercise capacity of the patients involved. However, for the limitation of the cell therapy, after the treatment, the angina may relapse after prolonged or strenuous effort during work or recreation. This is the reference that we use for this presentation.